518. What I said, it happens every time on here. I listen, it was a good luck charm. The podcast, we have 518 right now. A thousand, even a thousand. We, I feel like we're gonna hit it by May and we monetize. Boom, another revenue stream. Boom, another passive income. Boom, we doing it. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021 is going up. No so you already know I'm about to get lit. You already listen. You already know. You know the vibes. You know the vibes. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, Don, what you gonna do with that money? Well, you came to the right podcast. I'm gonna tell you exactly what the. F- the Bamboo Project podcast starts in three, two, one. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. I decided I wanted to become a billionaire doing what I already love to do while documenting my journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray and this is how I'll turn my life into a living. I want to start off by giving a shout out to the Bamboo Project family. One of my immediate goals is to learn what it takes to become a millionaire and then help a thousand Bamboo Project family members get there. This may be your first episode, but for everybody else, this is episode 50. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not paying money to listen to videos with your phone, you can stream this podcast for free on all major streaming platforms such as Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, Anchor, and wherever you stream podcasts, we'll be there. For everyone listening to this podcast and not watching it, you can find us on YouTube at The Bamboo Project. We know sometimes you'd be at home like, damn, what can I watch? We have over 300 videos on YouTube of Dr. Sabi inspired cooking tutorial, travel lifestyle vlogs, tips on makeup, hair growth, real estate, basketball, and everything us. And you can find us on social media. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y, and my phenomenal beautiful girlfriend, Anita Byrne, A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. Right now, the Bamboo Project is currently made up of six projects. The Food Project, the Music Project, the Clothing Project, the Fitness Project, the Sports Project, and the Bamboo Project Podcast, which you are listening to right now. If you want a preview of what this episode is going to be about, you can check the description for the timestamps. We have four different segments on the podcast. The first segment is Life Update, which is a weekly update on what we went through the last week. Episode Playback is a recap of last week's episode and the things I could have done better. We have Donovan's Questions, which is usually some type of philosophical philosophical question that I want to challenge you and you can either answer in the comments or DM me or just ask one of your friends. And then the most and important final segment will be the topic of today. And today's topic is going to be about what makes a good relationship. Today is February. No, it's not February. It's actually March 2nd, 2.58 p.m. Okay. Uh, Starting late. I'm going to get into that in a second as to why we are starting so late. But I'm going to have a little snack break before then. So I was talking about it before and I had said I got approved for the loan and I thought everything was going to be good. And then come to find out like a week later, I got denied for the loan. Right. So when you apply for a loan through SBA, they give you like, I don't know, it's like a four week period of trying to figure out whether you can get the loan or not. And the first two weeks, they'll say, hey, uh, we see that you got to We see that you applied and this is how much money we're going to give you. In my case, it was $145,000. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. The next two weeks after that is pretty much them telling you they're not going to give you the loan. There's two more weeks of them explaining to you why you're not getting the money. So first they tell you you're not getting the money. Then you have to wait for an explanation as to why you're not getting the money. So about the three and a half week mark, four week mark, I get my explanation as to why I'm not getting this money. And as I talked about last week, it was my credit. My credit was not high enough. And I'm like... I just paid off all of my credit. So I'm like, damn, if I had did it a little bit earlier, I probably would have been approved for the loan. According to some lady I had called about it, she had told me that I would be good if my credit is a little bit higher. Right. But I'm going to come to that a little bit later. So I'm like, damn, I got denied for the loan again. So I'm like, OK, what? How? No, I got denied for the loan once. I asked my friend to help me apply for the loan again. Then I got denied for the loan a second time. The reason the second time was I had a duplicate application. So they did not even they did not even check to see if my credit was changed. They just said, we see that you apply more than once and you're denied. I'm like, damn, that kind of sucks. So I said, you know what? At the bottom of the email, right? They said, you can call us if you want a reconsideration. I said, okay, I would like a reconsideration. I want to get my $145,000, right? So I'm thinking I should call them up, 
everything should be pretty easy. I think she go pretty well. And to my expectation, it actually went better than I thought it was. She said, yeah, you know what? If your your credit went up, she pulled up my account. She's like, yeah, if your credit was this before and it went up from here, you, you're you going to be fine. So I'm like, oh, yeah, it's lit. So now I'm telling Melissa, we're about to get $145,000. I'm like, yeah, we're about to just start, you know, flipping houses and all types of stuff, right? So this lady gives me the information and she says, yeah, I need you to go on, you know, email this uh, address, tell them this, write this, write that. I'm thinking I'm going to send this email. They're going to be like, oh, word. You know, I put my credit report in there. They're going to be like, oh, this was good. Everything was fine. And in a couple of days, I would, you know, get my money. So I did all of that and I got an email today. Right. And I'm like, oh, shit. It's about to go down. I'm like, yeah, I got this email. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to get my 145. I might even get more than 145. I'm like, all right. So I get the email today, and it says that they had, they got my email about the loan reconsideration. I'm like, yes, because I thought, you know, we were about to be sitting around just like, all right, maybe they didn't get my email. Maybe it just got lost in the whole, uh, you know, what do you want to call that? The uh, SBA universe, and I just would never see or get the money again, right? So I get the email and I'm like, okay, I check it and it says zero. It says decline. And I'm like, how am I declined again? But it says that they reconsidering it. So I'm like, how can you decline me and reconsider? I'm like, you telling me I got declined with a higher credit score after you reconsidered it? I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. So I'm like, damn, this kind of just puts a little a little stunt on what I thought I was gonna do. I'm like, damn, we, I'm already I'm gonna spend the money like this. I'm gonna buy that. We're gonna go here, we're gonna do this, everything's gonna be great. So I'm looking over the email and the paper and the uh, the portal application, right? And I see at the bottom there's three boxes. Normally they're grayed out, but there's a fourth box that's not normally there that tells me I have to input documents. I'm like, okay, I got documents. I could do that. I'm like, okay, I can still get the money. I'm like, I'm excited. So I go and I click on this this uh this other box, the one that's not grayed out, right? And it takes me to another page. On the next page, it's like five more boxes, right? Never seen these boxes. These are new boxes. Never seen these before. So I'm like, all right. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking this is not me getting accepted. Like, I thought I was just going to reconsider. I send you the credit report and I'll be fine. So now what they want me to do is they want me to send tax returns, one, they want me to send business history, which would be something along the lines of uh, what would you call that? Uh, I guess my profit and loss statement, they said they want to see that. They also want me to verify my identity as well as a credit report. I think it says something about uh, delinquent credit or something. So they want me to somehow, I guess, prove that my account is not delinquent, even though I know it's not. So maybe that's the terminology they used. But. It's looking kind of like kind of gray for me to be able to get the loan, right? So I'm like, damn, this kind of sucks. So I'm just sitting like, okay, I'm probably not going to get it because my business that I applied for has not been making any money over the last couple of years. So I'm like, okay, I don't really know how that would work exactly, but I did some Donovan research, okay? So, you know, I'm a, I'm a whiz when it comes to the computer. So I decided I'm going to go online, right? I'm like, hmm. What happens if you don't file your taxes and then you apply for the loan, right? So I came across this nice, uh, this nice profile, this nice page. And the profile page said that they are looking for particular things on your tax return. I said, okay, I got particular things. I got some particular things. So, all right, this is looking good. It says that if you were affected by the parallelogram, then you would be accepted for said loan. I'm like, I bet this is this is going good. So my hopes getting back up. I'm like, all right, I might be able to get this money back. And then even better, it says that if you were a a gig economy worker, which is as you guys know, my past life, I used to be a bike messenger. This is this is long time ago. This is back before all the new guys listen to the podcast. This is back when I was like. Listen, this is like six, seven months ago. I was out there every day in the cold, in the rain, in the snow, every single day, just trying to figure out how can I make money to not have to do this anymore. And then one day I just like, oh shit, I'm not doing this no more. I have to go back and listen to how that ended up happening. So 
I'm a gig economy worker and my taxes are a gig economy worker. And I remember that you can file and get taxes, get money or get a loan for your business because technically I'm an independent contractor and this is my second time applying for the loan. The first time I got denied, not the most recent time was last year when my friend put me on, which is also in the podcast, 20, he got 20 G's. He don't, he's a, he's a bike bus. He got 20 G's for no reason, just for 20, just 20 G's. I'm like, that's crazy. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I could submit my personal tax returns, that might work. And I'm like, I did, here's, here's why I think that would work, right? It said that all they want to see with your tax returns is that you have the ability to pay back the loan. And last year, I made the most money I've ever made as a bike messenger. So it's looking pretty good for me to be able to pay back the loan. Now, this is just me saying this now. I don't know, but I'm going to try and submit the tax returns that I do have from that from last year to them. Because I had to file this year for some other nonsense because I don't like following my taxes too early because things be happening when you live on the edge of life. So I'm like, yo, I might I might have I might be able to finesse this. So I'm going to try and see if we can get a proof of the loan for the 145. Um, but that's where we are right now. One more thing when it comes to, uh, money, right? So everybody that's new to the, again, like I said, I've been a bike messenger for a very long time. And if y'all are new or not, I wouldn't even say new. If y'all never heard of Uber or, you know, these DoorDash things like that, how they work, they're 1099 contractors. What that means is that they are not employees of the business. So they don't really get benefits, right? And for the last couple of years, they've been trying to sue and become classified as an employee and things like that, right? So there's been a lot of class action lawsuits. Class action lawsuits, if you don't know, is when everybody comes together and says, we're going to sue you together. And it makes the the amount of money we're suing for a lot bigger. Let's say one person sues for $100, you only get $100. But if 100 people sue for $100, you get a lot more than $100. I don't know the math on that. It's like 1000 I think. So you get $1,000, right? Then multiply that by like 100. And that's what we're talking about when, we talk, when we're suing Uber, when we're suing DoorDash, when you're suing Postmates. That's what we're talking about. So little old me, you know, all the time, I'm, doing, I'm a bike messenger. I'm just, you know, doing my job. But they will get these emails like, hey, we're in a class action lawsuit. Do you want to, you know, be involved in it? I'm like, I mean, sure. I don't really think I'm going to get no money out of it. I just press check. Yes, whatever. So I've gotten, I've, I've gotten uh, like... One time I think I got like ninety dollars. Uh, another time I got like five dollars after they won the lawsuit. Uh, the most recent time I got one hundred and forty three dollars. So I'm like, you know, I'm living life, living large over here, living like Larry. So I'm like, all right, you know, why not? Why would I not sign up? It's free money. I don't have to do nothing. I just have to say yes to it. So I'm thinking, eh, what's what's gonna happen? Like nothing could really happen bad, right? So I get an email recently about another lawsuit from Caviar, which is now owned by DoorDash. So actually, I'm going to check. Right now, live on the podcast right now, I'm going to see if, uh, let me check. I'm going to check before I say anything. Let me check. Anticipation is building up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to and check to see if I got any mail. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be right back, guys. Okay. Check if I see you got any mail. So I have returned from the mailbox. Okay. This is from BJ's American Express credit card offer. Might have to look into that later. Funny story. I had an American Express card before for my business and I tried to buy a bunch of Prada for a photo shoot, but kind of the flex also. And then I tried to return it and then I couldn't. And then I had to pay them back for that money and I had to go to a lawsuit for it. So yeah, uh, here you go. Long story short. Uh, this is another junk mail. This is something from Badger Advisor. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Open it up. Let's see. Is this anything worthy of being on here? Uh, nope. Junk mail. Something from Deluxe. This is to the business owner of the Bamboo Project. 
don't know what this is, but let's open it up. See what this is. Deluxe. What is deluxe? Deluxe is a. A what? You said sex. Oh. Um. I don't know what they do. Oh, they do stamps and stuff. Huh. Yeah, so. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Junk. All right. And this is the last one. We're going to see if this one right here is anything that is worth opening. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right. Is this what we were talking about? Anticipation is building up, guys. I know you guys. And you guys are listening. You probably can't. You can't see it. So I don't need. I'll tell you once if I know once I know what it is. Okay. You do a three, two, one, three. Two. It is so it what is. this what this is right it here, is. guys. Okay. So as you guys are familiar with in the past, like I said, I normally will I fill out these uh class action losses all the time. I get a hundred dollars here and there, I get fifty dollars here or there. It's like it's whatever, because I guess everybody applies. So the more people that apply, the less money you get. So you can understand uh the confusion when I got a email about receiving this check in my hand for ten thousand seven hundred and eighty six dollars and eighty seven cents. Okay. This this is a check for ten thousand seven hundred and eighty six thousand eighty seven cents that they just sent me out of nowhere. It's out of nowhere, and I'm like, when I first saw it a couple of years ago, right? Not a year, like a couple of months ago. It's on the podcast. We talked about this, and I was just kind of like, what? I'm like, this cat. This has to be a mistake. Like ten thousand dollars, ten damn near eleven thousand. If you do it by in school, they say you got to round up, so it's damn near eleven thousand dollars. It just sent it to me, and I'm just like. Nah, and they kept saying that, oh, you know, it's going to take up a long time. You know, these things don't happen very really quickly. So I just kind of pushed it to the back burner, like, all right, whatever happens, if it does come, it does. If it's a scam, it's a scam, whatever. But the check is here. So last week I was talking about uh, getting money, right? We talked about this last week in the podcast. I'm like, yeah, it'd be crazy if I got some money, what I would do with it, right? Lo and behold, poof, bam, bow, I got $10,700. At $86.87, right? So you already know I'm about to get lit. You already, listen, you already know, you know the vibes. You know the vibes, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, Don, what you gonna do with that money? Well, you came to the right podcast. I'm gonna tell you exactly what the fuck I'm gonna do with this money, all right? Here we go. First on the list of shit I'm gonna do with my money, okay? I want y'all to know. Shit, listen, I talked about this last week. I talked about this last week. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If if I, let me let me come on this podcast and, and tell you that I got one hundred and forty five thousand dollars from the other shit, man. Listen, you thought you thought. Listen, so honestly, trying to go today. Listen, so we already we already talked. We had already talked about this. If the once we what we would do with the money came to, we already talked about this. Okay, what we said we would do. Let me let me back up from the mic because it's gonna be loud and shit. What we said we would do. Let me, I'm trying to gain down because I'm a little height. Uh, turn it down a little bit. Okay. So, step one is buy two new, brand new fucking laptops. Brand new laptops. Brand new. 2021, if they even got that. 2020 MacBook. I'm going there to buy MacBooks. I said, I'll go today if they got it in the store. I'll, after the podcast, once I press end podcast, I will get up and go to the store and buy a new, a new MacBook for me. I'm getting one. Melissa gonna get one brand new laptop. Here's the thing, right? Melissa's laptop is from St. John's, so it's not really her laptop. So this is gonna be Melissa's first laptop ever. Her first laptop she's ever had in her entire life that belongs to her. No guy worry about paying it off. It's not nobody else. If something breaks, she can take it to the store and get it fixed. With the St. John's one, you can't do that because they have like a code on it, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. First laptop, I need a new laptop. I have had this laptop for mad long. If you've been watching the wholesale videos, it's funny enough. I actually, the last video I did, I was like, yo, my laptop, it be going crazy right now. I was talking to my friend about this recently, right? And I'm like, yo, I need space on my laptop because I got, if you, have, if you have follow us on Instagram, we got a, a, a two, we got a one terabyte, 
hard drive, a two terabyte hard drive, a four terabyte hard drive, and an eight terabyte hard drive. And they all are damn near full already. We just got these shits. They already full. We do a lot of content, a lot of stuff on here. We have a lot of footage that we haven't even edited to put up yet. But this is what I need. This is what I was talking about before. This is not the, the check I'm looking, looking for in terms of to like give me that space to get the content out. Because this helps a lot, though, because what's going to happen is when I start getting a little bit more money, it allows me to have the time to get all the backlog videos out and kind of set everything up for the next move. Listen, if you've been rocking with us for, since last year, we've been making moves. Everything we've been doing, this is all calculated. We've been doing this from last year, planning, planning, planning. Every episode we talk about, listen, we're going to do this. We're going to try this. We're going to do this. And in between, you know, we be fucking up, but they be, they be, we be getting there. See, here we are now. Two new MacBooks, okay? That's that's the first step, okay? We can't even, first of all, okay, first of all, let me get to play something to y'all, okay? Because laptops are so old, right? Y'all might even hear it sometimes. It just be screaming in the background. <laughs> the fan just be, I mean, the fan just be blowing crazy all the time, right? And we just like, yo, we can't even, it gets hot. The fan is loud. It stops. You can't update it. We can't even put Big Sur on it because we don't have enough space. And it crashes the computer almost instantaneously for both of us. Melissa almost lost everything on her computer because she tried to update the Big Sur. It's just crazy. We're sitting here like we're in the Stone Age with these old ass laptops. It just, they don't even have, mine is older than hers. She has like the touch keypad, not the touch keypad thing, like a newer uh, trackpad that I don't really have. And it's kind of, your laptop is dying. And I'm just like, yo. We got to update this. Like, we can't be living like this because we do too much content. Now, let me not even get started on Final Cut Pro. Let me try and edit a video while also watching a video in the little section you have to watch videos. My laptop is laughing at me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you going to do what? You can't do that. You, you, no, we shut. And get, you know what they'll do? Just turn off. Just stop. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, imagine what's going to happen now with the new shit. And you thought I was done? You thought that was all we was doing? We're not that we doing we we doing more. That's only the first two. We getting two brand new MacBooks with 516 gigabytes of storage. Not these 125 uh, bullshit ass uh, laptops that we have. 516 gigabytes, brand new, and we get we're paying extra for the RAM because I think that's how RAM works. It makes the computer go faster. I'm gonna double check before I spend the money. But that's what it's supposed to do. So I'm paying for that shit too. Listen, y'all don't get, listen. That's just that's just the first part. Part number two, we all know from a couple months ago, right? Melissa had made a terrible purchase and she bought an iPad. And I was like, babe, you not that. I said, babe, listen, I said, babe, you do not need to have an iPad. There's no reason for that. She was like, I need, I'm like, no, you don't. You waste the money. All you want to do is spend money for no reason. You want to go out here and get an iPad just because you got a little bit of dollars now. We got the unemployment check. We got the stimulus. So you stimulate. Now you want to buy uh, uh, a little iPad. I'm like, listen, listen. You don't need that. And it, and then she want to buy uh, an Apple Pencil and a case. With the, I'm like, you're doing a lot. You got, you're getting money. You're doing a lot, right? So she gets the iPad, right? And I'm like, Yo, I might need one. Like, can I, I might have to get one of my iPads because I feel like I'll be using it more than her. Like, it was in the house and she be in the bed and I'll be using the iPad. And I'm like, damn, I might need one of these shits. I'm like, fuck, I might have to go out. And get an iPad. So I'm like, you know what? But I'm smart though. I'm, ec I'm economically and fiscally responsible. I have uh, financial intelligence, right? So I'm like, I'm not going to make no stupid ass purchase. I'm going to get, because Melissa went out. Oh, I, I forgot this part, right? Melissa got the, 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 the super duper uh, uh, storage space one. Right, and I'm like, you're doing a lot. You got a, you got the 500 gigabyte storage or 250. You got the Apple Pencil. You got the iPad to begin with, and on top of that, you got this case. So I'm like, yo, it's got two cases, honestly. So I'm like, yo, what are we doing here? So, uh, now, I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah, I might have to get one of these. But again, remember, Donovan, fiscally responsible. That's what I do. So. I went out and I said, what's a smart purchase? Get you the 32 gigabyte iPad because you're not stupid. You're going to get you the one that you don't need all that space. Don, what you doing this for? It's only for real estate, right? You That's all you need. I was wrong. I should have got the big shit because every day I, I, I put, I, I, I sit, I, I take a screenshot of my, of my iPad, all space taken up. I take, I, I take a video at three seconds long and a whole video. I, I can't do nothing else on there. That's it. After I, after I do any little thing on there is that's all, it's all filled up. Now, 
Now I can't even do real estate because it'd be crashing because they don't got no space to do the real estate. Stupid, it's just ridiculous. And I got like three cases for it that two of them don't or two don't work. And the third one is fire. It's a laptop case. That one's fire. It, it turns into a laptop. But now here I am with an iPad that I can't even use. So you know what I'm getting to? I'm getting another iPad. I'm getting a big iPad. I'm getting a big super duper 256 iPad. Brand new, spanking new iPad. I'm getting that. And if you, like I said before, Back in the day, which I already know, I used to use both iPads. Melissa's is my iPad and my iPad, right? Now, I don't really do it as much because I have, actually, that's not true. I used to use my laptop and her iPad, but now I can use my laptop, her laptop, my iPad, her iPad, and my new iPad. That's what I'm going to be doing. Real estate is going to be fire in here, and I forgot one more thing, and my iPhone. My mom bought me this nice little thing right here. It's like a little stand for the thing like this. It's, it's cool right here. Uh, so I got that, and listen, we going up. Oh, listen, y'all already know the vibes. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021. We making moves all year long. That's what we doing on this side, right? You thought I was done? You thought that was all you was getting? No, it's ten thousand and seven hundred dollars right now. Just two iPads, and we got two MacBooks, one iPad. We at like three thousand dollars. No, we at like three thousand dollars. Honestly, somewhere in that, I, I say four, right? We still have another damn near seven thousand dollars left. That's crazy, right? Think how much you can do with seven with ten thousand dollars where you know how to spend it. Two MacBooks, everything is investments. Next. After that, okay. We get a new camera. We're getting cameras. We're getting more cameras. Because here's the thing I gotta tell y'all, right? The Baby Project Sports is real. Y'all heard about it in the intro. Y'all know what's here. Last week, even weeks before that, people were like, yo. You know, I like the videos. I'm fucking with the videos. Can you put me on? I, I, can you, I need a mixtape. I need a highlight tape. And I'm like, I got you. And then I want my production to be amazing, right? I want my production to be phenomenal, right? Now, if you watch the videos right now, we got angles on, on, on YouTube and the basketball videos. We got angles, all right? We only got, we had like Melissa got one angle. I got to put my iPhone down for another angle. I got her iPad for another angle. I got my Pixel for another angle. But you know what we doing now? Now we got more angles. We got another. We gonna have another camera and another iPad. We it's gonna be ESPN in there. It's gonna be NBA, ESPN. Uh, uh, what's the other one? TMZ. What they? What's the other one? T TNT. All of them. Listen, it's just the beginning. I'm telling you, it's just the beginning. Watch the quality of everything going up. If it, I think it's funny, people that probably don't even remember this. Y'all probably don't even remember this, right? Like I said, a lot of y'all knew, so I'm gonna put y'all on. This is, this, there was a, a time, I, I want to say it was honestly around this same time last year. I'm like, oh, we just learned about these new uh, uh, plugins for Final Cut Pro. Like, watch how, watch, how, watch, watch how better the videos get. Right now, they're not really good. And then, boom, now shit's is fire. If you go watch the Atlanta vlog, fire, you watch any of the vlog, any video we put up in the last, honestly, seven, eight months, probably been fire. And if you go before that, it, we were struggling with the thumbnail. We were struggling. stuff. It, it was cute, but it wasn't like where we at right now. So, you know, like I said, we get another camera, right? You probably like, Dan, it's Christmas. I know it's Christmas, right? But it's not done. Santa Claus is coming back. We got more stuff coming. We are also, this is not from the $10,000 because Melissa has been uh, financially responsible with her money. She's been saving money, paid off all her bills. Her pay off my credit cards. So my credit cards are damn near paid off. So, and she's saving money. So, you know, we decided, what she decided we we're going to do. She was like, you know what? Well, I would say, you know, I was like, yo, we should probably get a, we should probably get that extra light. So Melissa said, well, listen, I got money and my bills is paid. So I bought lights. So now we got lights. Now we got studio lights coming in tomorrow. Yeah. Like, what are you, what are y'all doing? I know, I know, I know. We get big ass studio lights in the apartment. It's a studio apartment. So we got to get lights to match the name of the apartment. That's that. Right. And I think there's something else on that list. Wait, wait. something else on the list i don't know the other thing i forgot that one we need a new tripod, a new tripod? Mm -hmm. we have two tripod? <laughs> i even know we're getting a tripod now we're getting a tripod too listen and we're gonna and oh, teleprompter that's we getting both of them teleprompter we get a teleprompter and we get a, listen now this is how you spend your money right because i think after all these purchases we probably still are gonna have about five thousand a little bit more than five thousand right that's not including the money that Melissa has coming in every week. That's not including the wholesale once I ever close a deal at some point. That's not including none of that. 
and I and I paid off my credit card. So in all honesty, my credit card has one of them has a limit of eighty six hundred dollars. That one's completely paid off, so I have eighty six hundred dollars on that one. And then my other credit card has like fifteen hundred. So we're talking about like ten thousand dollars on that, and that's not including any money that we make. And Melissa gets paid every week. So this and we have no bills. We have we literally have no serious bills to pay right now. So we make it move. We're gonna try to take advantage of what we can do right now. Listen, I always laugh. People be like, oh, don't don't have an LLC. Do that. I don't want to do it. But I don't want to be it. Well, listen, you're going to be listen. It, it, right. Listen, here's what I'm going to say, too, before I get move on from this the LLC thing. Right. Having an LLC is very beneficial, even if you do not start some huge company. It's just for tax purposes. It's, it's beneficial. You can put yourself as your own. You can do a lot of stuff as yourself and get a lot of benefits. Get bigger loans. You can have access to more credit. You can just do more things having a business. You don't have to say, oh, I don't want to open a pizza shop and work all day. No. Tax purposes. Just get an LLC. It'll help you down the line. I'm telling you, anybody that's young listening to this, if you are under the age of 21 right now, listen to this. For sure. Anybody over that, them too. But if you're under 21, I'm telling you, go look up how to get a business, a EIN number, and just do that. It's probably less than $100. It might be, depending on what you do, it could be less than $300, $400. But regardless, get one. You will use it, and it will benefit you in the future. You don't even need it now. Just get one to say you have one because you will need it at some point. And pay your credit cards off and have good credit. So that's that. Um, no late payments either. Uh, funny, yeah, no late payments. Don't do that. We don't need those. Now, uh... Like I said, you guys know Bamboo Project hashtag Bamboo Project twenty twenty one is the vibe right now. That's where we at. Uh, last week I was talking about how amazing we was doing on YouTube. It was at four ninety. Okay, we was hype. I think I post that on Instagram. The video of when we got five hundred subscribers. I gotta post that because we are now over five hundred subscribers. Actually, we're at five fifteen. If I check right now, no, we're at five seventeen. Last time I checked. I'm going to check right now. If we up again, listen, y'all know how it goes. When I be on here, I check it, and then we be up higher than the last time I, I, when I thought I was. Watch, watch this. 518. What I said. It happens every time on here. I Listen, it was a good luck charm, the podcast. We have 518 right now. 1,000. We hitting 1,000. We I feel like we kind of hit it by May, and we monetize. Boom. Another revenue stream. Boom. Another passive income. Boom. We doing it. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021 is going up. You know the vibes. So, now... Uh, like I said, that's, we just hyped about the 500 subscribers. Also, listen, y'all know we, listen, it, it don't stop. So right now you heard about the YouTube channel. Right now you heard about the podcast. Right now you heard about the basketball. You, you know what we didn't hear about yet? The clothing. Because we went last week and dropped off the clothes. And you know what? It already sold. They already sell it in the store. It's already selling. It's just been there for one week and they want to buy the shirts. Listen, I'm telling you. Yeah, miss it now. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is you get to see on the ground level, first door, where we starting at and then you could come back later and watch it or you could ride along with us and be like oh this shit is crazy like they really going up dropping off the shirts last week now i'm I am gonna touch on that a little bit more right because here's the thing that store is like a thrift store right and it's like a market so they have they have a lot of different things in there. Everything is not necessarily just clothing. It's a lot of knickknacks and paddy wax and giving dog a bone. A lot of stuff in there that's not necessarily for clothing. So we decided that, like, if we do like some crazy one offs, like let's say she wants to do like a um a bubble jacket, which will be coming soon, handmade bubble jackets by the Bamboo Project Sports uh clothing. My bad. Um, she will be one off to take it to the store because we realized that the store they like to buy the clothes that are on the fringes, the things that like people don't really just buy that not you can't just buy them everywhere. They like buying that at the store. Right now we're making more so essential wear, things you can wear everywhere, like you know, a green regular shirt or a crop top or a, you know, a tote bag, things like that. But in the store, they want like a leather jacket with with uh with horns on it, with paint with paint uh, paint splatter, and then a hole in the back for you know distress we don't really have that in a collection right now so we we gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do but we are considering going to other stores because we do know the stuff is sell Pe- people buy the stuff we just have to now find bring it to a different market and then multiply that and see you know how we're doing with that um and the last thing for life update is like i said the basketball thing 
Most recently, what I did was I commentated on the last video. It seemed to get a pretty good response. That's a good thing. Um, my goal with basketball or the Bama Project Sports. Hold on, I got to sneeze crazy. <laughs> Thank you. With the Bamboo Project Sports is this, right? Is I want to be able to streamline kids to go from middle school, high school, and to the NBA, right? I think that I honestly believe I can take any kid that's probably, I mean, I would say even like 5'7", probably to probably still like around 5'7", to at least play overseas. At the minimum, it's overseas. I get, I believe I can do that, right? So I want to train people. I want to train younger kids, middle school, younger than that, because I really believe that I know what it takes to get there, especially with the fact that not outside of just the skill of basketball, I have the ability to obviously market them because that's a lot. It's very important when you're younger. It's the marketing now. I learned that when I was in college, in high school, is that a lot of people who are not better than me were able to get further just because they had uh, footage out of them. And I also noticed that even for myself, when I started making, that's why I started making my own videos because I'm like, hey, some, I know I can average 30, but you nobody else knows that. So I need to show you I can average 30. And that's how I ended up getting to college to play basketball. I was, that's a whole other story, though. But that's how I got there is because of that. Um, so I want to take that in, uh, knowledge that I have and help other people get there because a lot of kids want to become NBA players. And even though it isn't the best route to take, a lot of black millionaires come from sports. So if I can streamline that and easily get you to, you know, play basketball for, you know, uh, play, play what you love to do and get paid for it. Obviously, like we say here, turn your life into a living. Why would I not try to help people do that? As well as me being amazing at basketball. If you don't believe me, check it out. I get buckets. So that is uh, the update on that. And I just want to improve the uh, the quality of the um, the videos on the weekend, the basketball videos, and then expand it out. I'm gonna try at some point. I'll probably get to other sports that I'm you know whatever. But right now, it's gonna be basketball. So uh, you know, next segment is episode playback. And on episode playback, right? As you guys know, uh, new intro uh, debuting last week. Um, still needs a. I honestly no. Let me not say that. I think it was fire. I think it sounded very professional. See, when I listen to it, um, obviously it needs some fine tuning, and that comes with time and learning what I need to change and what could be fixed. Um, but I think overall it was really good. Um, I think also when we had the teleprompter. It'll be a lot easier to get through the intro. Uh, I can look right at the screen. I can see the words. It'll probably be spaced out better. And like I said, I want to change a couple of words here and there. But I think for the most part, it was a really good intro. Um, another thing, too, I've talked about in the podcast is inhaling. So as I've noticed today, well, not really today, but as I'm seeing today, is something about, I don't know, when I start talking more, my nose gets clogged up more. I don't know if it's the mic. I don't know if it's something over here. Maybe when I talk, I inhale some type of dust mites or some type of cat hair. I don't know what it is, but once the more I talk, then the more I get congested in my nose. This is why I'm moving to Atlanta because I'm tired of this little tiny studio. I'm gr outgrown it. I remember when I first got here, it was fire. I'm outgrown it. I need to expand. I need to have a clear space, clear head where I don't have to deal with no more, uh, nothing congested in my nose, right? And the podcast will become better too. Um, but because of that, I can't inhale properly. And you guys already know when I inhale, it allows me to slow down and bring, you know, the, everybody listening back to what we're talking about. Um, and it also lets me to like recollect myself as I'm doing it. But imagine me trying to inhale. Oh, here. It's like I don't really do the same thing as when it's like a nice, clean inhale. Right. So there's that. And then the, the timing of the inhaling, I think, is off because I'm still trying to figure out how to inhale when I'm speaking. So that it doesn't sound too crazy or like offbeat when I do. I want to still sound like it's normal within the conversation. So what I've realized is as I'm talking, once I make a point, that's when I will inhale. Right. But you hear that sounds nasty because I fucking congested. Sound like I got it like a fucking, I don't know, sounds weird. But it should be like that as opposed to when I'm talking, I'm like... Like that, that, I was doing that in the last episode and I feel like it didn't sound good. 
Um, so I have to work on that. Uh, the Kevin Samuel segment, I'm not a fan of it from last week, and I already know why I'm not. I had watched it. I had a thought about it. I was wanted to re- more, or, more or less react to it, if you want to call it that, right? And what happened was when I do that without actually, I guess, taking notes or sitting down and breaking down what I think about it, it doesn't come out as a cohesive thought on the podcast. So it's me trying to recollect or remember what I was saying or what I felt when I first watched it. So I think as me going back and listening to it, it's if you don't know who he is, maybe it would entice you to go listen to it. But I don't think that I gave a good representation of him through that piece that I said on last week's episode. Um, so I guess obviously I finessed it a little bit to make it not sound too crazy, but knowing me, I didn't like the way it sounded. So that's something I have to remember. It's like, if I'm going to speak about something like that, I should probably at least take notes on it. Cause it happened similar thing with Joe Rogan podcast a while ago. I was listening to it, trying to recall what I, re- what I heard or what I saw and it just didn't come out right. So I think I should probably take notes on it and then refer to the notes as I'm reading. And so I can remember like, Oh yeah, he did do this or he did do that. Or now that would take too long. I was going to say maybe I should put on a, like react to it while I'm watching it on here. But that would, if it's mad long, that's not going to work. So what would be better for that though, was if I watched it and then cut the clips that I wanted to refer to and then had that on a podcast. So that way I'm not trying to watch the whole thing on the podcast. So that might be something I look into. I might do that at some point. Um, I, I had drank water at some point and you guys also know that that used to be like a transition I used to do. Like I would transition with my water. You hear me slurp the water. Like that would, it would be that, right? But when I did it in last week's episode, it just was a long pause. It, it wasn't really like a, it was a really bad transition from one segment or one topic to the next. The water transition was just like, a, uh, it just was like, what's happening? Is he drinking water? Is he talking? Is he not talking? What's happening here? I don't know. So I don't like that. Uh, I also talked about having a stricter schedule. And I didn't write the schedule down, but the schedule is definitely working. And I think that I will be able to have the video of the podcast out every Friday. I believe I'll be able to have the vi- the audio out every Wednesday. I can do a wholesale video every uh, Sunday, have it done every Sunday, have film it on Thursdays, have it out by Sunday, film the podcast on Tuesday, have it out by Friday, and have the audio out by Wednesday. And on Saturday, uh, go play basketball, have that video out by Monday. Uh, so that's right now how it's looking. And then uh, Monday, hopefully Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and possibly the end of Tuesday, I could wholesale. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now for my schedule. So it was good. And the old, the last piece of that puzzle, right? I'll tell you what's funny about that. Here's the last piece of the puzzle, right? It's the fact that the podcast is not shot earlier in the day. Because the podcast does not take very long to shoot. And now that I've kind of gotten more a lot better at uh, doing the podcast, it doesn't take as long to edit. So if I can do the podcast at 10 o'clock in the morning, it allows me the whole rest of the day to get so much things done. But when I do it in the middle of the day, like 2, 3 o'clock, and it might take an hour and a half, two hours. Now it's 5. I got to eat again. Now it's like 6.37. Now I'm going to do something for like two hours. Now it's 9, 10. And I didn't really get much done. But if I can get the podcast up, or not up, or recorded by like, started at 10.30, finished by like 11, 12, finished like 12, 12.30, then now a lot of things will get done, and then you will really see like, the Bamboo Project firing on all cylinders at that point, I feel like if we can do that, then we can build our, I, I call it credit, uh, on top of that, um, and move forward with that, so like I said, st- st- schedule, definitely getting better. Um, and this is a quote that I came up with listening to last week's episode. Okay, here's a quote. Here we go. One second. That's my new inhale until I learn how to figure out what's going on with my nose. The quote is, fill the holes in your boat before you have to buy a new boat, right? I'm going to say it one more time. Fill the holes in your boat before you have to buy a new boat. Now, last week I talked about fixing the small things in your life because they always turn into big things, right? And I use that analogy because you may get a hole in your boat, 
right? Whatever your hole in your life would be, however you want to consider that, and you don't fix it because you're like, oh, it's, just, it's not that big. It's a small issue. It's not a big issue, right? So you might just leave it there. You're like, I'll come back to that later. And then you do it again. You do it again. Now you fix it. You know, like, oh, this league is getting kind of big. Let me fix this big league, right? And then you're like, damn, I got a couple more cracks, a couple more little holes. And you're not filling the small holes. And then one day you're going to realize that there's so many holes that you have that everything was small at first. Nothing was big. They're all little tiny holes that you just kept leaving there. And like I said, this all pertains to whatever your life is. You know what the holes in your life are. I don't have to tell you. You know what they are if you think about it. When I say holes in your life, you know what they are. But you keep letting them happen. And it's easier to fix the hole than it is to actually go out and fix a whole new boat. Imagine being out on sea. You're trying to get back to shore and you have no boat. Your boat broke and now you're in the water with no boat. It's going to be a lot harder to get back to the shore if... You don't have a boat. If you have a little hole and you patch it up, I bet. Patch up the hole, get back to shore, fix the whole boat, whatever the case might be. But I came up with that because last week I was talking about little things in my life that I have, to, like the small things that fuck you up, that kind of slow you down, that don't allow you to get to where you want to get to. And it's those things. And if you don't fix them fast enough or if you don't fix them, they become bigger issues. Um, I also did not do the clubhouse room. I talked about that. I wasn't able to make it. I think I was with my mom doing something. Something came up. I wasn't able to go to do that. So I didn't make it to the clubhouse room. But the guy said he does want to be on a podcast. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Try and do that. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, uh, he does Airbnb. And he makes websites for people who do Airbnb. Or he's more of a marketing guy. So he recommended a book to me to read. And I'm thinking about bringing him on a podcast. Because he's helping me right now kind of structure the Airbnb. Uh, or let me not say that the corporate housing company that we have the website for. He's helping us kind of do that. Um, Giving me little tidbits here and there. So that's another thing. We also talked about pessimism versus optimism last week. And I think this is funny because I'm, I'm pretty sure if you are, if you are one of the people, right. That pay attention to optimism or optimistic people and pessimistic people. You'll probably notice that a lot of old people are very pessimistic. And it's so weird because it comes up in the strangest places. You'll go up to them and say, hey, man, how's it going? Yeah, man, I'm just trying to get by. You know, life is just, I'll be like, whoa, Jesus Christ, why do you sound like that? Yeah, man, you know, it's what I think just going so crazy. You're like, oh, my God, I don't even, that feels weird talking to you. And it's it, I've noticed it with older people. And it's even crazy because it's almost like it's wired into them. Because I've seen older people having a good time, laughing and joking. And you go to them, hey, how you doing? Just living my day, day by day, hoping I make it through. And you'd be like, you was just busted out laugh. Why do you sound like that? Well, I don't understand why did you go from everything is great to, man, I just, you know, I'm just trying to get through it. You know, we all have one time we're going to leave. I'd be like, okay, this is weird. Um, but it's also one of those things I bring it up because it's infectious. And I said, even last week, you don't have to be uh pessimistic or the the aka realistic about it or realism whatever you want to call it a realist because both of them are infectious you can choose to be optimistic you don't have to be the other one and like i said i feel like for the last week i've been pretty optimistic at least i've been trying to be optimistic um so i feel a lot better and i also said this last week i don't have any problems in my life other than melissa be bothering me that's the only problem i have other than that i'm perfectly fine the only problem I have are money problems. That's it. And honestly, if I had more money, she probably wouldn't bother me. I'll pay, I'll buy, big, buy a, a bigger house and go outside the house, and she would be able to bother me. So only problems I have are money problems. That's it. So once I figure those out, I won't have any problems in my life anymore. Like, I really don't have any problems. I have a nice place. I love my girlfriend. I have, I get to do, I got to do, I just got a text right now that says, I want to buy your bike in the morning because we meet in Manhattan. That's what I'm saying. Like, you think I'm joking. Like, I just got to tell you, heard the sound. It just says, I want to buy the bike. Can we meet in Manhattan? And this is what I'm talking about, right? I'm like, I don't have any problems in my life. I really, I do, I get to wake up every single day and do what I want to do all the time. Whether it's wholesaling, whether it's editing, whether it's watching Baruto, Naruto, eating food, eating pizza. I get to do whatever I want all the time. And I get to play basketball. I get to record it. I get to edit the basketball videos. This is, this is how I always want my life to be. Now, the only issue is I got to get paid for it. That's it. That's the only thing. And then I was like, some money, I could get like a bigger studio and stuff, whatever. But that's besides the point. Um, also, last week, I do not think I was speaking clearly enough. Uh, Melissa talked about it earlier today with me. She said that even in this intro, 
a couple, the articulation, I have to remember to not use contractions when I speak, to only use whatever the opposite of contraction is. That's what I have to do because it makes it sound a lot better when I use the whole word instead of just the contraction, the contraction. Um, and like I said, last week's episode, it was like, a, I, for me personally, it was okay. I think it was good because it was an intro to today's episode. But by itself, as a standalone, standalone episode, I think it could have been better. Uh, I think that happened because I was not, I was in the process of doing a lot of things. And then boom, the pocket, it was Tuesday. So I had things I wanted to talk about, but I couldn't actually flush out all the ideas. So that's what ended up happening on, the, on that episode. So, but as you guys know, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Master Finesse. Um, Donovan's questions. There are none today. Uh, huh. Yeah, nothing really to say about Donovan's questions. But the topic for today is having a good relationship, right? Now, this is only one thing. There's only one perspective of it or one uh, part of having a good relationship, right? Uh, something the other day happened where... Uh, let me try it again. Hold on. I'm going to try, try and breathe. Hold on. Give me a second, guys. I can't even breathe. I can't even inhale. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try again. That was only one nostril. So, when I go to sleep, right, uh, depending on what I eat before I go to bed, I be all the way, like, fucked up, right? And what I mean by that is, for me, fucked up is, like, if I eat and I fall asleep, I, I, I fucked up. I shouldn't have fell asleep after I ate. I ate something I shouldn't have ate. Uh, I do not believe that food should make you tired, and the Bamboo Project food is about that. But as you guys know, we put it on hold because of real estate and trying to get money so that we can actually do more stuff that we love to do. And as you guys know, turn our life into a living. So I was able, I had to put it on hold. Um, so we would eat a lot of food that isn't the best for us. So when I eat the food, uh, I fall asleep. And a lot of times uh, when I wake up, I feel like I've been drugged. Right. And my mouth would be dry. And as you guys, as you guys can hear, my nose is stopped up. So now my mouth is dry because of the food and I'm sleeping with my mouth open because my nose is clogged. So now I'm just looking like a crazy person in the bed. I wake up like the episode. I remember when SpongeBob was like, I need water. That's me when I get up in the morning. Right. Or not in the morning, just wake up from a nap. I mean, you feel like I'm dying. So the other day, uh, I don't know why this jumped out to me so much. I don't I don't I have no idea why it did. But I woke up and I just woke up like a day. Like you ever be sleeping and you wake up, you're just looking around your house like, how did I get here? Like you just, like you have, it takes you like three seconds. You're trying to figure like, okay, oh, I'm in my house. Like you just wake up from a crazy, like you were drugged. So that was me, right? So I get up, I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, oh, okay, I need to, oh, shit. That's how I feel when I get up. I'm like, oh, God. So Melissa just looked at me and just like gave me water, right? And for whatever reason, this stood out to me so much. And I, I, I have a feeling as to why it was, but it just something that really stuck out to me. And she gave me the water. I drank the water. And I was just sitting there thinking about it. I'm like, yo, this is crazy because I feel like for the most part, I don't think Melissa and I really have that many issues other than when she be bothering me, which I might bring up later when she be bothering me. Um, but as far as like bigger issues, I don't really think we have any like, oh, this is, this is not, nah, this is crazy. Um, so she, she gave me the water and I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, for her to, to give me the water, right? In that moment, it's, I, I take that as she just knows what's going on. And for me in my life, one thing I've always taken, I guess, more seriously or what's more important to me was when people do things. Cause they just know you like you don't have to ask them for it they just know that oh no i'm not going to buy uh green pants he doesn't wear green pants like i've never said i don't wear green pants i've never said hey do i wear green pants but they just pay attention to you enough to know what you like and don't like and for me that always affected me differently people do that because it means that it's not always a uh a selfish thing when they do it. it's like oh yeah I, I know that you wake up you be tired or you be thirsty so here's water um so the reason I bring that up is because that that doesn't come with that doesn't come overnight. Like that doesn't just happen one day. You wake up and she just gives you water. Um, and I think that a lot of times people nowadays, when it comes to relationships, because I even was like this at one point where if it doesn't work, you kind of want to like end it. Right. And I'm not talking about cheating either. 
That doesn't be not that's a whole different conversation. We're talking about that. You cheated, that's different. But if if it's something that's like that just that just annoys you all the time, right? I feel like with time those things get better and with time they go away. Melissa and I, when we first, I think our second date, right? We had went on uh we had went dancing, right? And I think we did like a tango, we did the salsa, we did um what was the other one that we did? It was salsa, tango, and another dancing that we did, right? And I wanted to do that for a particular for for two reasons. One, at the point at the time I was running game, and I wasn't really running game, but it was when you put yourself in a position that you are in charge of stuff, girls like that. So dancing is one of those things where it's like if you take lead during dancing, the girl gets wet and wants to fuck, right? So I'm like, all right, let's do that. So <laughs> So I'm like, let's do that. But I also know that it's a language. It's a it's a it's a form of anything that's new is a language and dancing has its own language. And I remember that when we were dancing, it's like you have to the guy would lead. He put his foot back and the girl puts her foot forward. He puts his foot forward. She puts her foot back and, you know, whatever other dance stuff they have. So. I compare that to the water situation because I see that as one of those, oh, I know you well enough to know what your next move is going to be. And I consider that to be like dancing, similar to how I view basketball, where it's like you just know what the next step is going to be. You know what the next move is going to be. I didn't have to say, hey, Melissa, OK, we're going to step to the left and then we're going to go to the right and then you're going to go backwards and then I'm going to go backwards and we're going to spin around. It's like, no, you can just feel which way we're going. You can feel which way the person is moving. You can feel what the person needs without them actually having to say it. And I think that's very important in a relationship. I think that if you I would even say it to go as far as trying to find those things the other person likes and doesn't like without them telling you because i think that will strengthen your relationship because you may not even pay attention to those things and when you start actually looking at it and paying attention to it then you'll be i think your partner whoever you're with will be like wow i didn't even know that you pay attention to me that much i didn't know that you see when i get out the car i use my left hand because i don't want to hit my elbow on the door like they can you it's little things like that that people go wow you really pay attention to me like you really care about me to know like you really watch me um and like i said i feel like for me personally i like that a lot i'm assuming a lot of girls also like that too um but like i said that still comes with time so if you watch your girl get out the car one day or vice versa you're not gonna know that uh her elbow hits the door she gets the car it has to it has to happen multiple times but you have to just watch it and see one thing i remember uh when i was younger with my dad right uh we were in a barbershop and he was he would he'd always like read like the uh the magazines that were in the barbershop right and one day he was reading he was reading it and i noticed i got noticed it before but i just kind of just threw it out the window because i'm like you know it's whatever but like i said you start to watch these things over and over again so he would read the magazine from the back of the magazine and i didn't know if any i'm like I just never know, like, why would somebody do that? But that only comes from being observant of the people around you. So when I asked him that, he was just like, wow, now I didn't know that you noticed that. And I'm like, yeah, why do you do that? He was like, I didn't even know I really do that. I'm like, yeah, I noticed you read it from the back. And he was like, that's crazy. So we were sitting there trying to figure out why he does that. So what he will do is he'll open the magazine from the back and he'll kind of flip the pages from the last number to the front. And I'm like, who reads a magazine like that? But... The fact that I was able to pick up on that and the fact that I mean, if I was at some point able to use that to help him in some way, then obviously that would be, a you know, he would find that as me being uh, more caring. But the main point I'm making is that these things come from you observing the people that you're with and just being like, hey, don't worry, man. I know I know that this or whatever. I got this or whatever. And honestly, you don't have to even say anything, to be honest with you. Because let's say Melissa gave me the water and then she just passed me the water. I don't think she asked if I wanted water. She just picked it up and was like. I'm like, yes, I need water. Like, I'm about to die. Like, oh, my God. Like, like I'm like, I feel like I was in the desert. She just passed me the water. And I was like, oh, shit. This is exactly what I needed. This is 100% what I needed. Um, So, like I said, I just think that that's very important with people who are in relationships. I think that you have to give it time to kind of work out. You have to give it time to learn the other person's, you know, dance moves and their steps. Um, Because, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to give it some time. What I was going to say was that 
when I was running game before, what I would do was, because the game teaches you, and my game, I mean, like the pickup art, it teaches you, you have to be ready to leave your girlfriend, like all the time, at all, at all time, be ready to leave. Um, and I took, that, I took that to heart. And by taking it to heart, that meant that the minute that a girl did something I didn't like, breaking up was always on the table. Like that was always an option. Like what you mean? Wait, what? You're not going to, you're not. You're not gonna pass me the all right. Well, listen, obviously, you're playing games. I'm out of here, like, I'm not doing this. And it could be the smallest thing, but it was just to assert the dominance of I'm I will leave right now, no matter what the case might be. Whether you leave the cabinet open, if you step on my foot, if you bump me and don't say nothing, listen, oh, we we done, like, we oh, no, no, this is it, like, that's it, we're completely done. Um, and the problem that I was having with that don't get fixed if every time they come up, I'm like, yo, we out of here. I'm done. Because I don't think that me leaving reinforces the fact that this is a bad thing, especially if I'm doing it all the time. The last thing I'm going to say on that is I talked about this with my friend before where if every time your girl does something that you don't like and you threaten to leave, one, not only do you lose the power in leaving because she's like, damn, you're not actually going to leave, but... You also cause her anxiety by always thinking you're going to leave for everything. So it starts off, am I pain with anxiety? Like, oh my God, is he going to leave me for this? He's going to leave me for, oh my God. But then it starts turning into uh, like almost lack of respect for you because you no longer stick to your word of leaving. You're like kind of wishy-washy when it comes to that. So, and honestly, here's my reason why I think that, right? I think that the reason it turns into a lack of respect is because by you trying to manipulate her by using your leverage of leaving against her that's like an attack on her and so now that she's realized that the attack doesn't work she now goes oh you were attacking me hashtag uh toxic relationship you were attacking me now i must attack you back and that's when she loses respect for you and starts to be disrespectful because she's like, oh you're gonna leave yeah, go ahead and leave, bitch. You ain't going nowhere. You always say that shit. You never going nowhere. Fuck out of here. You never gonna go nowhere. You always say you leave. Yeah, here's your bag. Take your shit. Get the fuck out of here. Cause she knows you're not leaving. But now, how do you respond to that? How do you respond to you knowing you're not gonna leave? And she called you a bitch. What you gonna do now? So now you you know you're not leaving. You try that. You tried the line again. It didn't work. And she looking at you like, bitch. I know you're not going nowhere. So you can pack the bag, go outside, go around the block, come back inside the house. Cause you're not leaving. You you don't want to be in a house like that or no relationship like that. So, you know, that was my last thing I wanted to say as far as uh relationships go i think that I remember time heals all wounds and all dance moves so uh you guys know the vibes on the podcast uh we're getting right to the action let me see if we got 519 yet on the uh no we left 518 last basketball video is doing good like i said the commentate people like me commentating on the video i might have to add that in there again next week 121 views on the last wholesale video. listen we doing listen we doing pretty well we are doing pretty well on this side um so you guys know the vibes we are welcoming guests between 10 to 12 on tuesdays like i said i might have a virtual guest soon on the podcast if you want to come on hit me up we can figure something out i might because i want to try a virtual thing one of these dates to see what it's what the what the what the vibes is about you feel me Uh, i want to do that uh, if you haven't already, you can go check out our social medias. Mine is Donovan Gray. It's going to be around on the screen somewhere. D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And my phenomenal, beautiful girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. We have multiple different projects. All right. We have the food project. We have the clothing project. We have the music project. We have the fitness project. We have the sports project. And we have the bamboo project podcast which you just finished listening to right now and with that being said bamboo project out